I challenge everyone watching this video to leave a comment with your own Xenoverse tips, tricks, and trivia, because I guarantee I know everything. Prove me wrong, and the best ones will be used for future videos in this series. Thank you ever so much, and I do hope you enjoy just over two hours of Xenoverse tips, tricks, and trivia. Enjoy. Vados will appear in the Time Nest if you complete the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 Destroyer Tournament DLC. Before this, she's nowhere to be seen in the Time Nest, but if you get the DLC and complete that part of the story mode, Vados will be a permanent fixture in the Time Nest. For some reason, they hid her away. There's no explanation to this. But yeah, Valus will appear in the Time Nest if you get that DLC and complete it. If you don't have it, she will never appear in the Time Nest. If you go out on a time patrol in the Time Nest by interacting with the Time Rift right next to the partner customization robot, and then you click Return to Time Nest, then restart the game, instead of then loading into Canton City directly, you'll then instead load directly into the Time Nest. There's a Namekian in Canton City that had his name change. Uh, I'm not going to say what it, what it used to be or, what it, or even what it is right now, but you can see right here, this Namekian had a slightly different name when the game first came out and it was changed because it sounded similar to another word which is widely considered to be offensive. <laughs> There's also another character in Condon City by the name of Amy right next to the accessory shop. Now, Amy was the apparent winner of a contest or a sort of like a vault that Bandai Namco held just before Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was released back in 2016. This was a bit of a website thing where you could go and create your own time patroller and the time patroller with the most votes would later be added into Xenoverse 2 and if memory serves correctly this was added in I believe the fourth update the DB Super Pack. Or if you talk to Amy, you can get her battle suit for your character straight away, right off the bat. But what's interesting about this is that Amy wasn't the actual true winner. There was at least two characters that had more votes than Amy. Those characters were a margin that resembled and was named Mickey Mouse, and another margin that was named and resembled Pikachu. It's naturally obvious as to why these weren't added into the game. It's just interesting to note that Amy isn't the actual true winner of that specific contest. You can get a guaranteed Dragon Ball to drop if you make a new character and talk to this character in Canton City right here. The reward from defeating this character is, I believe, it's the four-star Dragon Ball, but if there's a Dragon Ball that you don't have, for example, if you've got all of them apart from, again, for example, the second-star Dragon Ball, the two-star Dragon Ball, what have you, by defeating this character, you'll get that Dragon Ball or any other Dragon Ball that you don't have. You can do this as much as you want until you've got a completed set, then you won't get any more until you, you then use the Dragon Balls on Shenron. And again, this is a guaranteed drop from defeating this character. The only, I guess, downside towards this is that this can only be done once ever per character. So if you've got one slot free and you need to get Dragon Balls, just go and make a new character, defeat Raditz, then talk this character, again that's by the school in Canton City or the Time Patrol Academy, whatever it's called, defeat her and you'll then get one Dragon Ball that you don't currently have. Your starting moveset can change depending on which of the three options you pick when you first make your character. Those three options are, I'd like it up close, nice and personal, I'll hang back and blast them from afar, and close or far, I keep it balanced. If you click the first option, I like it up close, nice and personal, your starting moveset will be Meteor Crash, Meteor Blow, Super Guard, the Full Power Energy Blast Volley, and Super Front Jump. If you select I'll hang back and blast them from afar, your starting moveset will be the Consecutive Energy Blast, Energy Shot, energy charge as well as the full power energy blast volley and the super back jump 
And if you select close or far, I keep it balanced, your starting moveset will be Meteor Crash, the consecutive Energy Blast Super Attack, After Image, as well as Full Power Energy Volley, and your evasive will be Instant Raise. Side note, if you, right off the bat, you can make one character with all three of these options, then delete the other two characters, and you'll keep the skill. So you can mix and match right off the bat. Some of these skills are incredibly useful, and flat out good. For example, Instant Rise is widely considered one of, if not the best evasive skill in the game because it does its job. The consecutive Energy Blast Super Attack is an incredibly underrated key-based super attack and Energy Charge, despite it being the worst charge attack in the game, starting off from the very beginning, that's it can be incredibly, I can't stress this enough, it can be incredibly incredibly useful. Your stats can change depending on what body type and height you pick when you're making your character. On the screen right now, you can see a screenshot of a comment I found, which I personally found very useful. So pause to read this comment and to learn it and understand it and stuff like that, if you so wish. All five of the current avatar or CAC or custom character, whatever you call it, all five of the current CAC avatar, again, whatever, races in the game right now, all have different passive abilities. For male margins, they can take, well, they do take less damage the more stamina they have and vice versa. Female margins have incredibly fast stamina recovery. Saints get a, well, get an attack increase, a Zenkai boost when they have flashing red health. Earthlings have auto key recovery and they get an attack increase when they have max key. Namekians have health regen whenever they have flashing red health and the freezer race has the fastest speed out of anyone in the game. Again, there are a few more to this, so it's not limited to just those things I've just mentioned, but I think that's a good starting point, at least for what this video is, I guess. There used to be a completely harmless glitch in Canton City where if you went to around this area in the overworld, you could actually fly through the mountain and go inside of Canton City. If I remember at least, this was removed, or rather they fixed it, in Legendary Pack 1, the Legendary Pack 1 free update. But it was just cool to see, I believe Goku and Oob and Supreme Kai of Time herself, as well as just some random Time Patrollers were all over the place here, and some of them didn't even have dialogue if you spoke to them. I understand why it was removed, but this you couldn't exploit this, there's nothing to gain really from doing this other than just to see Canton City from the inside out and again unfortunately it was removed. On the PS4 version of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 there is an option to select old Canton City and new Canton City on the title menu. This doesn't do anything. The only reason this was added was because on the PS4 version of Xenoverse 2, they were running out, apparently they were running out of space or memory to save specific online things such as your world tournament records, your TP rank, nicknames and titles that you could get from event rewards, favorites that you've made in terms of time patrols that you've favorited, gift information and stuff like that. You can still log in to old Canton City, but no new events have been on there or will be on there. For example, raids, world tournaments, the Freezer Invasion event, as well as the Canton City TV. All of those are in the new Canton City server. For some reason, whenever you use body change on Kid Boo or as well as Kid Boo, Super Venus Mold Kid Boo, <laughs> for some reason, his face does this weird warping thing. It's all, it only appears on this version of Boo and no other character as far as, as I'm aware. I don't know if this is a reference to pure evil Boo that Margin Boo battled to the, and then got eight to then become Super Boo. But it's just interesting that this is the only Margin Boo character in the game that this happens to. Very bizarre and a little bit eerie, to be honest. Despite being able to make a pure blood sane custom character, for some reason, whenever you turn Super Saiyan, your hair doesn't spike up, with the exception of Super Saiyan 3. And that's just a completely different hair model anyway. But for any of the other transformations, or Super Saiyan transformations, as of right now, 
Whenever you transform into any of those Super Saiyan forms, your hair just changes color and the appearance outside of the color doesn't change at all. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is currently the best selling Dragon Ball console game of all time selling just over 7 million units. You can only win by using self-destruct online if you're not the host of the lobby. For example, if you are the host of the lobby and someone joins and you have max health and they have as little health as possible without actually being defeated, if you then go for self-destruct and it connects, you won't win regardless. You cannot win by being the host of the lobby. This is never explained. It's assumed that it's a bit of a glitch or an oversight because it doesn't make sense at all. But yeah, just weird. If you equip any of the crystal raid skills and then go into photo mode, your character will have the villainous mode aura. Although, unfortunately, this doesn't work online in a normal one versus one. If you recover on an invisible ground, you can actually recover by using a double-handed backflip. For the purposes of this video, I spent a good 20 minutes trying over and over and over again to try and get this, but I personally couldn't do it. I have done it in videos in the past, but it's something that I don't know what the exact timing is. I spent a long time trying to do it, couldn't do it. Feel free to try it yourself and let me know if there's any specific trick to it. But again, this only works if it's an invisible ground rather than a solid flat surface. Both legendary Super Saiyan Brody from Dragon Ball Z as well as full power Super Saiyan Brody from Dragon Ball Super Brody are the only two characters in the game right now to have a different color for their basic key blasts. Instead of it being yellow, there's our green to represent legendary Super Saiyan, full power Super Saiyan, stuff like that. Yes, Ribran does fire hearts, but at the same time, those aren't necessarily key blasts. They are, but it's like it's not like it's a reskin of the key blast. Just a bit of a disclaimer right there. Majub has a somewhat secret second preset, which is Majub in the Oob outfit and a moveset that more so resembles Oob from the end of Dragon Ball Z. To get this, you do need the appropriate DLC, I believe at least, which is DLC 10, also known as officially Ultra Pack 2. You do need to go and buy the Oob gift in the TP Metal Store if it's available, then go and talk to Oob, who should be by the World Tournament Arena next to Hit. Talk to him, hand over the gift, and you'll get the second preset of Majub. Mecha Freezer appears in the Xenoverse 2 intro, but as of right now, He's not anywhere else to be seen in the game outside of his quote-unquote outfit that you can wear for your characters. He's not a playable character, and apart from appearing in the intro cinematic, he doesn't appear anywhere else at all, as of right now, in the entire game. You can get the Flying Nimbus vehicle by talking to this character flying in the sky in Canton City once you learn how to fly. Basically, as in when you defeat Final Form Freezer and Final Form Cooler in the Dragon Ball Universe 2 story mode. Despite it being the Flying Nimbus, it doesn't fly. <laughs> Doldon Ray is a key based super attack which takes no key to actually use. And if you're playing with limitations off and you have the Doldon Ray Super Soul, you'll recover about one bar of key each time you go for a Doldon Ray. Regardless whether or not the Doldon Ray is successful or if it's blocked or if it misses or what have you, this makes for a very nice alternative to using, you know, for example, a charge skill, for example, energy charge, full power charge, maximum burst, ultimate charge, etc. Do keep in mind that it is pretty spammy. However, certain attacks can go through super armor. For example, the basic grab, as well as skills such as Super God Fist, Savage Strike, as well as Gigantic Rage. You can no longer leave or kick someone from your lobby if it's a ranked lobby or a world tournament lobby. This was done to try and stop people from boosting the leaderboards, which 
It worked up until a certain point, but it is something that you still technically could do. If anything, it may just take a couple of extra minutes longer to do. Long story short, boosting in Dragon Ball Universe 2 is that you'll make a room and you'll battle someone, presumably yourself, on a different console to get the points to then boost up on the world leaderboards. Again, it's not really been fixed. It kind of has, but not really. And you just can't kick people once two people join, again, either a ranked room or a world tournament lobby. If you see someone in Condon City or in a lobby, whether it be a parallel quest, a ranked lobby, player match, endless raid, what have you, it doesn't matter. If their name is red rather than white, then this means that that player specifically is a mass rage quitter. They rage quit when they are about to lose or when they do actually lose, but because of how Xenoverse works as of right now, it doesn't count it as a win or as a loss. It counts it as a no contest. Again, that's only if they have a red name rather than a white name. Certain skills, if fully charged and if you're in a Super Saiyan transformation, can teleport. These skills include Kamehameha, the times 10 Kamehameha, as well as the fully charged Big Bang Kamehameha, as well as evil explosion. You can actually find a super Dragon Ball radar as an accessory near the Dragon Ball pedestal in Canton City. Now, unfortunately, for the purposes of this video, I wasn't able to find one. Just go and reload the game, as in make a parallel quest room or what have you, or just restart the game in general. Then go to this area here and then pick up all the items on the ground and eventually you will find a super Dragon Ball radar accessory that you can actually wear. There's actually a voice from Team Four Star that you can actually have as the voice for your playable character, your cack. Take a listen. Stop. Believe it. Ha! Stop. Huh? Ha! Huh? Daddy! Yep. The music that plays in Canton City will have this instrument playing depending on how far away you go from the city. Once again, take a listen. If you pick this eye option here, and I believe there's another one at least as well, but then transform into a Super Saiyan 3 on your Saiyan CAC, your eyes will completely, in every way, shape, and form, your eyes will completely change into what you would expect to see from a Super Saiyan 3. Going from Xenoverse 1, the original Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, a couple of characters were removed, a couple of playable characters, those being Venus Mold, Xeno Trunks, Venus Mold, Vegeta, Venus Mold, Ultimate Gohan, as well as Venus Mold, Super Saiyan 3 Gold Tanks, as well as a few more. Now for this next one, I'm not entirely sure if this was a glitch or if it's been removed from the game, but if you used Emperor Sign in a team battle and you used it and you were a freeze race character, you can make your teammates move at beyond what looks like modded speed. Again, I don't know if this is still in the game or if it's been changed or what have you, but it can make for some pretty interesting results regardless. If you're hit with Spirit Sword, you won't be able to use a Limit Burst to then protect yourself by, for example, using an Invasive or what have you. If you're hit with it as well, as you're trying to limit burst, it will pause it or just stop it and you just can't limit burst out of Spirit Sword again if you're hit with said attack. It is technically possible to make a completely neutral 
Q, Q, bang. As in, it doesn't give you any plus or any minus points to the six given stats. I did try to make one for the purposes of this video, but I believe it's completely RNG. So with that said, if you guys know of any recipes to make a completely neutral QQ bang, please do let us know what they are in the comments, as I do want one, just for the sake of saying that I have a neutral QQ bang. You can't access the Freezer Time Rift if the Freezer Force Invasion event is on in Canton City. Now, again, for the purposes of this video, I couldn't get any footage of that specifically just because the Freezer Invasion event is a timed event in Xenoverse 2. It comes on every couple of months or every x amount of time i don't know when well i don't know how long that is it, it is pretty much random when it happens but again for the purposes of this video unfortunately i couldn't get any footage of that specifically just because the event wasn't on the rock paper scissors super attack is different depending on which input you select the screen total naturally those are rock paper and you guessed it scissors there are two skills in xenoverse 2 with the exact same name that is the super explosive wave the first one is the evasive skill and the second one is a key based super attack which can also be used to well you can go for backflip before you click it if you click l1 downwards and it launches a sort of like a miniature version of the full power energy wave ultimate attack final form mirror heavily resembles super saiyan 5 from the fan-made dragon ball af manga and the more i look at it the more i think yeah the the resemblance is rather uncanny maybe with the exception of raid characters custom full power super saiyan broly from the dragon ball super broly movie has the most health out of any other character in dragon ball xenoverse 2 there's a character in Canton city by the name of tolsok where if you go and talk to him you can level up all the way from level one all the way to level 99 by using Zenny from level 1 to level 80 and then using TP medals from level 81 to level 99. You can do this immediately as long as you have the necessary Zenny and TP medals and if you've already prior unlocked your potential to get to level 99 on a different character by talking to Guru in the Namek time rift you can recover stamina at a much much faster rate if you're on a solid surface rather than if you were flying keep in mind invisible grounds do not count if you use an ultimate attack on your opponent but you don't lock on to your opponent they will not receive that sort of heads up display alert on the side of the screen depending on the opponent the situation as well as the skill for example a great skill to use for this specific situation will be again for example the super key explosion ultimate attack you can pretty much win a fight, basically, especially if you've just exited a clash. Nappa, as a custom mentor, has the ability to turn Super Saiyan. But funnily enough, if you do turn Super Saiyan on custom Nappa, his toupee will disappear. It won't turn golden, it won't stay the same colour, it will just flat out disappear. But funnily enough, his toupee will return if you then revert back to Nappa's base form. If you access your play trends in play data, you'll get a couple of play trends which indicates or claims that you have certain favorite characters, favorite skills and stuff like that. Although this technically is wrong, at least to some point because it may not actually be your personal favorite skill, super attack, ultimate attack, character or what have you what this actually is is the characters and skills and stuff like that that you've actually used the most not your technical favorite again super attack ultimate finisher i think it is as well as character mirrors presets are called universe seven clothing and then one two three and four depending on the preset this is interesting because given that it's specifically labeled as universe seven you would think that this may indicate that there's other versions of Mirror 
in different universes. For example, universes 1 through 12. Who knows, maybe a hint at a future game. Again, who knows, we'll have to wait and see. By using an additional input on Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta's Super Kamehameha, you can absorb it to get an attack increase. Janemba, as well as Fu, as well as technically Villainous Mode Janemba, as well as Custom Janemba, or have unique vanishes as opposed to the traditional teleport vanish. When you go and select to make a character, if you then back out of the selection, you may experience a unique animation, a sort of like foot stomp animation, which is nowhere else to be seen in the entire game. You can increase the damage of dual ultimate attacks if you increase this bar on the left of the mental icons, this little like blue, green, turquoisey color mental bar, the higher it goes. The Hakai, also known as officially in Xenoverse 2, the destructive fission will go through pretty much every other key based attack. I think maybe one exception is the divine Kamehameha, but apart from that, it will go through pretty much every other key based super attack as well as every key based ultimate attack. The margin mark accessory will completely disappear if you transform into a super sane free. There's never been an explanation towards this or a fix to this, so I don't know if this is intended to show, oh, how strong super sane free is. Maybe, I don't know, or more likely, it's just an oversight or a glitch that's so unimportant they decided not to fix it, at least not as of right now. But yeah, if you transform from base form or from Super Saiyan 1 or Super Saiyan 2 to then Super Saiyan 3, the margin mark accessory will completely disappear and it will return the moment you drop out of Super Saiyan 3. Potential unleashed on Ultimate Gohan, or rather Adult Gohan, and potential unleashed for your custom character, although they are the same Awoken skill, the same skill, they are technically just a little bit different from one another. On Gohan, well, the appearance is different from Gohan to your custom character, and the shading and lighting is different as well. There are several tiers of Hercule badges in Xenoverse 2. The main reason for these are just to sell to get a lot of Zenny in return. You can also, if you want, use these as mixing items when you mix them to make a QQ bang. But honestly, for the most part, well, not even for the most part, there are several better mixing items you can use to make a QQ bang rather than using the Hercule badges. Going back to an earlier fact in this video, if you have all seven Dragon Balls that make a brand new character or talk to this character here in Canton City after defeating Raditz, instead of getting another Dragon Ball, you'll get a Hercule badge. But again, that's only if you have all seven Dragon Balls. You can actually charge your, well, chargeable Key Blast by holding down, at least on PS4, PS5, Circle, and you'll get this little bit of an effect here. This will either make them stronger or prolong them to therefore make it stronger in the case of the Key Blast Barrage key type. Patrick states the English voice actor for Dio in the English dub of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure as well as Jiren in the English dub of Dragon Ball Super is also a voice you can pick for your custom character in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. A bit of a bonus fact here, before Patrick states was cast as the English voice actor for Jiren, there was actually a different voice actor who I believe was only cast as Jiren just for the English dub of Xenoverse 2. But with that said, do take a listen to some of his lines if you do decide to pick this for the voice of your custom character. <laughs> Whoops. A Woken hit, and by extension, Custom Awoken Hit is considered to be the absolute best cast character to play as in all of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 
2. There's a few reasons for this, but it's mostly because of the fact that he's just easy to learn and easy to play as. He's incredibly fast. He's got an absolutely devastating infinite combo that if you get your stamina broken, it's pretty much game at that point. As well as the fact that if you go for both stages of pure progress, his damage just goes through the roof and that, well, both stages of pure progress are permanent awoken skills. So even if you're knocked out, I don't believe you go back to your base form. He's incredibly broken and overpowered. As of this recording, which will be before Legendary Pack 2 is released, in terms of Awoken skills that have been added in the game since the game was released, first it was Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken and Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 10 just for Goku, then Super Saiyan Blue, then Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, then Super Saiyan God, going in a sort of reverse order in terms of strength and just general stuff like that. Despite what your custom character looks like, if you use any of the super ghost attacks, they will just look like either Gotenks or Boo, depending on which version you use again, regardless of what your custom character's appearance is. Buhan has the longest grab in the game. Modders on the PC version of Xenoverse 2 have been able to, I guess, data mine or what have you, a file in the game which has deflection physics for at least key based ultimate attacks and presumably as well key based super attacks, as you can see right here. It's assumed that these weren't implemented into the game because of how broken it may make things or just through balancing issues apparently and i may be wrong here but apparently if you were to do this it would take away stamina or rather it would require stamina to deflect this is absolutely fantastic this is something that i didn't know at all going into this video and yeah this is insane Wow. <laughs> the playable model for Supreme Kai of Time has been significantly updated and is now more detailed compared to the non-playable model of the Supreme Kai of Time. This is widely speculated to be because of the fact that this was maybe planned for a third Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3, but was ported over, I guess is the word, to Xenoverse 2 to continue with the updates. As of Legendary Pack 1, there are 31 different presets of Goku in Xenoverse 2. Keep in mind, this is just purely of Goku, so this is not including Fusion, Zamasu or Goku Black. By clicking left on the D-pad, at least on the PS4 and PS5 version of Xenoverse 2, you can go into Skelter Mode and you can actually see what skills, with the exception of the Awoken skill, your opponent has on their character, as well as what their power levels are. And speaking of Skelters, your Skelter perspective will change colour depending on what colour of Skelter you're wearing, even including the Golden Skelter. If you go all the way to the ceiling when you're battling against a Great Ape, for example, in the, well, at the end of the Sane Saga Story Mode, they won't be able to hit you at all. Kefla has two different grabs. These can be activated automatically if you're standing on the ground or if you're flying. Vegeta is the only character with several presets where the aura changes color depending on which preset of Vegeta you pick. If you pick the first few presets, for example, the Skelter versions and the Planet Dynamic versions of Vegeta, his aura will be red. If you pick the later versions from, for example, the End or the Boo Saga of Dragon Ball Z, as well as the Resurrection of F Sain Above God preset of Vegeta, his aura will be blue. There is a mechanic in the game which is officially known as a Just Guard. This is when your timing is perfect and you get a block that looks something like this although it's more commonly referred to as in the community as a perfect block rather than a just guard if your timing is perfect when you play as super saiyan god vegeta you will do 
increased damage and you'll get a different sound effect. Villainous mold characters have no super souls, therefore they can't limit burst. Although I don't believe it's ever been explained why they don't have any super souls, it's more than likely for a balancing reason because these tend to be much stronger characters than a normal character and they have a key charge which also recovers stamina and key at the same time. Keep in mind, it does have a priority on key. So when you have max key, it will stop charging even if you don't have max stamina. Again, it's never explained. That's more than likely the reason why in terms of the law, I guess. It could be assumed that it's because they sold their souls, maybe, to get an increased power up. Maybe so sell your soul, super soul, Let's move on. <laughs> There's a way to unlock several skills in one go, and that is to defeat or rather to win in the Crystal Raid mode. Regardless of which team you're on, as in if you're the raid boss or one of the raid bosses in the 2 versus 4 Crystal Raid mode, or if you're battling against the raid boss or the raid bosses. Keep in mind, I believe for DLC, you'll need the appropriate DLC pack, and I don't think it includes skills from every single DLC pack, but I may be wrong on that, and I don't believe it includes the Supreme Kai of Time skills either. You were able to vote for a future character in Xenoverse 2 via the Canton City hero vote. There were five options here you could pick from, those being Ultra Instinct Sign Goku, Bagamo, Dispo, GT Vegeta from Dragon Ball GT, as well as Android 18 from Dragon Ball Super. If you use the Kaioken times 20 Awoken skill, so using Kaioken when you have five or more bars of key to then go into Kaioken times 20, you will be able to vanish as much as you want without it actually draining any stamina per vanish. But do keep in mind that your stamina will constantly slowly drain, but again, it's not going to take any stamina away from you when you vanish. Much like in previous Dragon Ball games, Hercule has a jetpack so he can actually fly. If you use the times 20 Kaioken Kamehameha ultimate attack on Goku and you're playing in the English dub in Xenoverse 2, at the end of the attack, the voice will go into Japanese. Do take a listen because it is pretty funny. If you use the Photon Swipe Super Attack against the Gigantic Key Blast in a raid, it will automatically send the Gigantic Key Blast back. I would assume that this is a glitch, so this may change at some point in the future, but as of right now, with one Photon Swipe, and I think it may also work with other skills such as the Darkness Eye Beam, but I'm not entirely sure about that specifically. But again, using the Photon Swipe Super Attack against the Gigantic Key Blast when the Beam Struggle or the Struggle, we have to try and send it back to the Raid Boss, you know, happens in the online raids. It will, we're just using it once, which takes one bar of key to use, again, it will instantly send that gigantic key blast back and you'll get a lot of points and more than likely end up in first place. Despite beam clashes or beam struggles, whatever you want to call them, not currently in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, depending on which two attacks hit each other, you'll get effects that look like this. If you already have all three of the current raid bosses unlocked, last three being Demigra, Final Four Mirror, and Corrupted Merged Zamasu, and then you rebuy those gifts and then talk to Fu again and hand over those gifts, he'll then instead, because you've already got those characters unlocked, he'll then instead give you 10 Demon Realm Crystals per gift you give him. If you talk to this robot here, you can get information on past updates that were added to Xenoverse 2. If you look carefully at the Xenoverse 2 title menu, in the XV, you can actually see the Toki Toki City 
Hourglass, despite this not making an appearance in Xenoverse 2, with the exception of, I believe, just one mission in the Xenoverse 2 story mode, where you go back in time to just before Trunks summons Shenron, back in the original Xenoverse game. And speaking of the Xenoverse 2 title menu, because this is the second Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, there is a two-star Dragon Ball on the title menu and back in the original Xenoverse game, because it's naturally the first Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, there was a one-star Dragon Ball. So hopefully if Xenoverse 3 happens, They'll continue this little bit of a tradition with a, well, with the third star Dragon Ball. Female custom sane characters will keep their eyebrows when they use Super Saiyan 3. Now, in all fairness, I want to say this may be was already a thing in Dragon Ball Heroes at the time, and technically as well, Super Dragon Ball Heroes for female Saiyans. But yeah, just interesting how in Xenoverse 2, a female Saiyan will keep their eyebrows, unlike a male Saiyan, if they use Super Saiyan 3. There's two different versions of the Darkness Rush ultimate attack in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. The melee version, which only Saiyans Earthlings, the Margin Race, as well as the Freeze Race can use, and the Ranged version, which is only usable by Namekian Kax custom characters, avatars, again, whatever you want to call it. But funnily enough, if you use the Dual Darkness Rush on a Namekian custom character, they use the melee version, not the range version, even though as of right now, Namekians cannot use or even equip the melee version of Darkness Rush, only the ranged version. And side note, or a bit of a, a bit of an extra fact here, even though Margins have stretchy arms like Namekians, they can also only use the melee version of Darkness Rush, not the ranged version. There's a free version of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 that you can play literally right now, which is Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 Light. Keep in mind there are a fair few restrictions here. For example, you cannot make a Sane or a Freezer Race custom character. You only have five character slots rather than eight. You can only get to level 50. You can only get to a certain point in the game in terms of the story and parallel quests and just general restrictions. Like It's, it's sort of like to give you a taste of what Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 can be be and what it is but do keep in mind that you can do a data transfer from dragon ball xenoverse 2 light to the full version of dragon ball xenoverse 2 i believe the way you do this is if you play the light version and you have a save data then you get the full version of xenoverse 2 you'll then get a prompt if you want to transfer your data from the light version to the full game and you can continue from where you left off in the light version of dragon ball Xenoverse 2. In the free update which accompanied Legendary Pack 1 for Xenoverse 2, a new character was added to Canton City named Stylist, or rather The Stylist. Now, this is one you go to to change like, your hair and stuff like that for, I believe, 10 TP medals. Now, keep in mind, apparently in Xenoverse 1, in the files there is something called Barber, like a barber to, to presumably change your hair instead of having to get the Dragon Balls, then summon Shenron each and every single time. But this, naturally, in Xenoverse 1, was never added. But something very similar, again, known as the Stylist, was added to a fairly late update to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. The first ever Canton City TV broadcast, <laughs> it's still funny, it didn't work. After months of promotion and Elder Kai and Trunks and Supreme Kai of Time talking once you went back into the city, promoting it, once the first broadcast happened and you had the 30 second countdown, once it hit zero, no video played, just artwork. <laughs> This was a mistake, or rather it was an error, or what have you, and they did apologise for it, but it's just interesting to note that this was the same broadcast that really kicked off Legendary Pack 2 in terms of what we could expect and stuff like that, given at the end of that trailer was when we had the reveal, or rather the tease, of full Power Jiren, later to be added into Legendary Pack 2 DLC 13 
for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Canton City, the old world, the hub world, we're going to call it, for Xenoverse 2 is technically Tolki Tolki City, the of world, hub world, again, we want to call it for the original Dragon Ball Xenoverse game. The reason why it changed, and I believe this is in the Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 manga, is because of these what well, the time rifts in Xenoverse 2. Apparently, there was loads of laws appearing and it, the city couldn't be contained. So, I believe it was Supreme Kai of Time with, I think, maybe Elder Kai. They then expanded it into what is now known as Canton City. If you're a margin custom character, there will be more margins at Margin Boo's house at the Margin Boo Time Rift. How many times did I say Margin Boo? Feel free to count. There'll be more margins there if you're a margin character, as opposed to if you're a Saiyan character, an Earthling, a Freeze Race, and a Namekian. Custom Goku can use Divine Lasso, one of the signature skills for Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black. The Tapion outfit, regardless of which version, they are all incredibly rare items to get in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. The reason for this is because I believe, honestly, all of them, I think, as of this upload, I believe they've all only been available to get once, and that was for getting a certain amount of points in, I forget if it was in a world tournament or in ranked matches in a set amount of time. After defeating Final Form Mirror at the end of the normal Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 story mode, Final Form Mirror only appears one more time, and that is in this parallel quest right here. Both the gigantic blue statue of Shenron in Canton City, as well as the summonable Shenron in Canton City they can use to make various in-game wishes on, technically isn't Shenron, or at the very least, it's not the Earth version of Shenron as this was created by the Supreme Kai of Time. There's various Super Souls in Xenoverse 2 that belong to characters or different forms of characters that aren't currently in the game or even in the Xenoverse series as of right now. These include Super Namekian, or rather the giant version of Piccolo from the original Dragon Ball, as well as characters such as Android 19 and Dr. Jello. Tien has a Super Soul, which is also available for your custom characters in Xenoverse 2, which completely nullifies damage from any Kamehameha skill. Although, do keep in mind, this does not include the Breaker Energy Wave, which technically is also known as the Angry Kamehameha. You can instantly revive a fallen teammate by using something that's known as a Flash Revive. Do keep in mind, though, that although this will instantly revive them, it does take away a pretty decent amount of your health. If you have 99 of a certain item, as in you have maxed out a certain item and can't get any more, then you get that certain item either as a reward from a parallel quest or a login bonus or from picking it up in Canton City. Instead of getting an additional item, you will just get a certain amount of Zenny. Basic Key Blasts have no effect at all on God of Destruction Topo because of his Hakoshin, or what we call it, his Destroyer Energy, his Aura. Keep in mind, though, that the do technically work on him and it will do damage and stun him and stuff like that if he's not in a position to sort of like protect himself. But you just spam basic key blasts on God of Destruction Topo, as you can see right here, they'll just have no effect on him at all. You can make one free Hero Coliseum figurine summon each day. To get past level 80, to get to level 81 and onwards up until level 99, you'll need to clear several of the Protecting Planet Namek missions, the Guru Namek missions, whatever you want to call them. I forget off the top of my head how exactly to do this, but I do believe first you'll need to be level 80 and then clear a certain amount of the protecting planet Namek missions. I think it's either 7 or 14, but I might be wrong there. And then you'll be invited to talk to Guru and he'll then unlock your potential. So you can then level up past level 80 to again, level 81 
and onwards up until max level, which is level 99. And for fact number 100, there is a data transfer feature in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. If you played the first Xenoverse game and had save data, you could transfer your data and your well and one character to participate in the Xenoverse 2 story mode along with your Xenoverse 2 custom characters. And that character will also occasionally appear as part of the Tolki Tolki City hero in the middle of Canton City where that hologram statue thing is. And also can transfer certain skills from Xenoverse 1 to Xenoverse 2 as well as your outfit and stuff like that. To get them near, well pretty much at the very start of the Xenoverse 2 story mode just after you defeat Raditz. When you join any online lobby, whether it be a play match, an endless battle, an online parallel quest, a raid, or any of the other number of online lobbies, your connection will always appear as a five bar connection from your perspective, even if you have a bad connection. The Key Blast cancels are part of the Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 PvP meta. A Key Blast cancel is when you cancel the animation of what you're doing by shooting a basic Key Blast and then instantly stepping out of the way. For example, if you are just going for a basic combination string on your opponent and then your opponent vanishes, instead of you either vanishing or stopping or going for a back hit, which can be perfect blocked or even count with a skill such as reverse Mebuku Senko, you can instead fire a base, just one basic key blast and then instantly step forwards, backwards to the sides or what have you to then get into a safe position to then continue. The Times 100 Big Bang Kamehameha Ultimate Attack has a sort of secret second function and that is if you use it locked off it will rotate making it quite a surprise if your opponent doesn't know they can do that and or if they are just not anticipating it. If you're in any of the Super Saiyan Awoken skills on your CAC, your custom character, your avatar, whatever you want to call it, you can hold down the heavy input on PS4, PS5, this is the triangle button. If you hold it down fully, you will snap vanish. A snap vanish is when you do what I previously just said and you can teleport with a heavy attack, a fully charged heavy attack. And if your opponent is either guarding, going for an ultimate attack or using fighting pose F, this will break their guard. If you go to the title screen and click on options, you can actually change the controller presets. Now, I want to say one of the presets I think is a preset that more so resembles the controls from the Dragon Ball Raging Blast series. The Blaster Ball Super Attack can be prolonged depending on how fast you can click the input and if you have enough key to do so. Don't sleep on this skill. This skill has got me out of quite a few sticky situations. Do not sleep on this skill. Depending on the situation and the stage, the Spirit Bomb Super Attack will rebound but it will go through solid matter. Um, this must be a glitch, but if you launch the Spirit Bomb Super Attack and your opponent moves out of the way of it, it can go through, I believe it works on the World Tournament stage, it'll go through the stands and then come back and possibly hit your opponent. You can get a guaranteed successful grab if you immediately go for the grab after getting a successful perfect block, also known as a just guard. There are a few ultimate attacks in Xenoverse 2 which can actually be used as a back hit ultimate attack. These include skills such as Soul Punisher, Crush Cannon and Power Rush. Full Power Super Saiyan Broly from the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, his super attacks can be used if you have enough stamina and key while you're being attacked. The Crush Cannon Super Attack can actually one-shot your opponent if it's fully charged. And also, you can pause the charging of this attack by clicking the Guard button. You can actually increase the hits on the Super Mad Dance Super Attack from just three hits to five hits if you use it while in any of the Super Saiyan 
awoken skills. Super God Fist will connect if you use it immediately after sending your opponent back with a knockback. Stamina breaks don't work in every situation. And what I mean by this is one example is Ice Cannon. If you use Ice Cannon successfully and freeze your opponent, if you then go next to them and go and try to use either a light or a heavy stamina break, although it will connect, it's not going to break your opponent's stamina, but it will still do a bit of damage and knock them flying back out of the ice. The Vanisher Guard Evasive was renamed to Punisher Guard. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> It was such a random thing that they changed. I, I still don't know why they bothered with that in all fairness, but yeah, the Vanisher Guard was renamed to Punisher Guard. There's special dialogue, or maybe more accurately, glitched dialogue, if you pick Super Saiyan God Goku versus Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Super Saiyan God Goku sounds like Super Saiyan 4 Goku. It's very weird. So with that said, do take a listen. How about it, Kakarot? Now can you fight without holding anything back? You're amazing, Vegeta. Now let's fight. It took... <laughs> it took five years for the in-game Canton City Information Board to actually work as it was intended. It now works and shows you the upcoming as well as the ongoing events in Xenoverse 2, such as when there's going to be, or when it's announced that there's going to be a Canton City TV broadcast, a raid, a world tournament event, even when there's a different lineup in the TP Medal store. Despite the name of the evasive being Instant Raise, you can use Instant Raise to go both up as well as to go down. If you ever notice white mist around any character, either that being your custom character, your CAC, your avatar, or an original character, that white mist means that there is currently a Super Soul taking effect. The cheapest items you can buy in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 for 50 zenny each are the following. An energy shard, an aura shard, a guard shard, an antidote drop and a shape up drop, once again, all for just 50 zenny each. The most expensive item you can buy with zenny in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is the Soul Punisher Ultimate Skill for 150,000 zenny. Strangely enough, both first form Cell and First Form Freezer have their First Form part of their name spelled differently from each other. One of them has First Form written as letters and the other has First Form written as a number as in 1ST rather than F-I-R-S-T spelling with Burkov. <laughs> Much like the information board in Canton City, now, on the title menu on Dragon Ball Universe 2, you can get information on ongoing online events. When you get max key, your aura will flare up, which looks particularly cool if you are in, for example, the Super Saiyan Blue Awoken skill and you keep getting max key over and over and over again. By using this Super Soul, which is a raid reward, you can change your basic key blast to a stone. Yeah. <laughs> but... So this is a bit of a fun one, which really doesn't mean anything. I just thought I'd put it on here just because. Bert is one of the characters that's actually added to the game's files and you could encounter if you connect or log in rather to Xenoverse 2, the content, well, content city in Xenoverse 2, while not being connected online. Not the single lobby. You can't be connected online. And if you do that, if you go into Canton City and fly around or reload the city if it's not there, eventually you will find the one, the only, Bert. You can use the Hyper Movement Evasive to freeze the basic combination string that you're doing and to, well, move at a hyper speed, <laughs> whatever, behind your opponent. It's a cool effect. It's not, well, it's not really efficient, but if you've got stamina spare and you're going to win or you just want to flex i guess then this does look so so cool as you can see 
right here. The hyper movement used to be the best evasive in all of Xenoverse 2 before it was nerfed. Before the nerf, hyper movement could break your opponent's guard if they went for an ultimate attack. It was incredibly overpowered. 24 hours before Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was revealed, on the 16th of May 2016, there was a teaser revealed, the Fly Through Time project or teaser or whatever you want to call it. This had a 24 hour countdown timer and once the countdown timer hit zero, they then officially revealed Xenoverse 2 with the Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 reveal trailer. During the fly through time countdown, Bandai Namco had revealed that there's a hint on this project page. Now, although I don't believe they ever came out and said what this hint was, I was actually, I think, the first person to find out that the hint was if you were to connect the seven Dragon Balls and kind of play like a connect the dots with it, it would spell out XV, which was an obvious hint towards Xenoverse and ultimately because of that, uh, well, at the time, it would have been Xenoverse 2, which once again would have been revealed once the timer hit zero. Legendary Super Saiyan Broly is the only character that can appear in Canton City with an actual aura. Once you talk to him and he can become your mentor, when you go and talk to him then in Canton City, he doesn't have an aura. It's only when you first approach him in Canton City that he has a rather menacing green aura. Ooh. There's kind of a Xenoverse holiday in the sense of for a few days each year from the 14th through to the 16th of May of, again, a given year, where we kind of not really celebrate Xenoverse. The reason why it's these three dates is because typically in the past, well, past few years since 2014, started in 2014 on the 14th of May, was when Xenoverse was first leaked in that month's V-Jump, before it was even referred to as Xenoverse, and at the time, just Dragon Ball Game Project 2014, I think it was, something like that, and then a few years later in 2016, on the 16th of May 2016 was when Xenoverse was first teased as the fly through time project and I believe on the 16th in 2020 was when we had the first scan for the free Supreme Kai of Time update for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. For some reason you can't change the name of your custom character, your avatar, your cac, again whatever you want to call it, when you use the Dragon Balls to summon Shenron, even though you can change pretty much essentially everything else. Ultra Instinct Sign Goku was added several years before he was a playable character. He was first added as part of a cutscene as part of the Tolkopedia mode. With the exception of Ultra Instinct Goku, the only other character in Xenoverse 2 that has auto dodge is, unsurprisingly enough, Whiz, but that's only in Parallel Quest 131. There's a few animations from Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 that were reused in Dragon Ball Legends. One of these being the Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Awoken skill animation in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, which is essentially the same as what they used for the Ultimate Gohan transformation animation in Dragon Ball Legends. Full Power Jiren's Grab will drain your opponent's stamina. You can make custom Jiren look like El Hermano. The male. Support for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was only originally planned for a year after its release. Now keep in mind, by support, it doesn't necessarily mean DLC. It means DLC and the online events and patches and stuff like that. But because of the overwhelming success and to some extent the surprising success of Xenoverse 2, DLC as well as support in both paid and free updates and patches and stuff like that has been going on for several years since its release. Wearing an accessory which has sunglasses doesn't actually protect you from blinding skills such as solar flare. There's a feature in Xenoverse 2 that you may have forgotten about and that is 
the Canton City Radio. And the reason why you may have forgotten about it is because there's only three, I guess, like broadcasts or what have you that, well, not a broadcast, like it only plays three times and each time is a different broadcast. I think two of them are of Kale and Cauliflower and they talk about Super Saiyan Pink, not Rose, Super Saiyan Pink or something like that. And the other one is of Super Baby Vegeta 2. This was added in DLC 7, also known as Extra Pack 3, but it only plays once per avatar, per character, CAC again, whatever you want to call it, once you enter and exit or reload Canton City. You can't even talk to, is it Garrett, the robot, by the time space delivery, like that thing there to play it. So why this was added is a complete mystery because it only plays once per character and you'll never hear it on that character, at least as of right now, ever again it's so, why just why <laughs> the volcanic wasteland stage is a reskin of the destroyed planet namic stage their special dialogue <laughs> dialogue in quotations between a Saberman and a cell junior despite them never meeting at least as of right now in the series <laughs> take a listen to the special dialogue <laughs> <laughs> Despite not being able to stack Dragon Balls, as in once you've got all seven Dragon Balls, you can't get any more of them until you summon Shenron and use Dragon Balls, in very rare circumstances, you can kind of have ownership over multiple copies of Dragon Balls at the same time. For example, right here, I technically, as of this part here, like this footage, have three sets of Dragon Balls. The first set is what I have from getting them from Palo Quests, and the other two sets here are from the Time Space Delivery, from, well, participating in the Piccolo Exclusive World Tournament and the Gohan Exclusive World Tournaments to celebrate the release, the Japanese release, rather, of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. I don't know what's going to happen if I accept both of these at the same time. I'm sure they will get overwritten and I'll lose two copies of them. But it's just interesting that in very rare circumstances for, what, 90 days at most, you can technically have ownership, kind of, of multiple set of Dragon Balls in Xenoverse 2, despite Dragon Balls not being stackable. Going back now to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1, Krillin and Yamcha both have a preset in Xenoverse 1 which has Kaioken. Not times 3 or not times 20, I don't believe, just the normal Kaioken. And back in Xenoverse 1, bonus fact here, Kaioken was a super attack, not an awoken skill. This was taken out for Xenoverse 2, no idea why or why they didn't get Kaioken as a mentor preset. But yeah, back in Xenoverse 1, Krillin and Yamcha had Kaioken on one of their presets because sure why not even though tn didn't so it's not as if it's from training with king kai it's very strange by using this super soul right here you can change your basic key blast into a heart like what rubrian uses in xenoverse 2 and in dragon ball super this is also a super soul that you can get from a raid if you summon shenron with the dragon balls and then wait shenron will get a little bit impatient with you and there's a few lines that he says that i just think are out of character and just funny so that said have a listen what's the matter hurry up and wish wishes get your wishes here hello uh excuse me i'm uh waiting for your wish waiting i was created by the gods As a result, I cannot grant any wish that would be beyond the power of a god. Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta from specifically Xenoverse 1 is the rarest character in all of the Xenoverse series so far. And the reason being is because 
Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, as well as the Crystal and Golden Battle Suits, were a Xenoverse 1 pre order exclusive bonus. Although they did give out, as in Bandai Namco did give out some codes after Xenoverse 1 was released, if you were to get Xenoverse 1 right now, brand new either as a physical game or as a digital download, the chances are you're not going to be able to get Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta as a playable character because, again, he was a pre order exclusive character and at least as of the recording and presumably upload of this video you can't download the pre-order or purchase the pre-order bonus digitally for Xenoverse 1 like how you can for Xenoverse 2 and if you do have a cold a physical cold for Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta in Xenoverse 1 there's a good chance that it's either been used already or more likely at this point that that cold would have expired. What we now know as Super Souls in Xenoverse 2 were originally known as Z Souls in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1. If you can defeat Final Form Mirror quick enough in the Xenoverse 2 story mode, there's actually a slightly different ending. There's also a secret ending in Xenoverse 1 if you can defeat Final Form Demon God Demigra quick enough. Take a look. <laughs> a little more just a little more you can't lose don't be a fool just making it this far is amazing on its own You can get a completely neutral QQ bank if you mix together two of Yamcha's tops, the Yamcha Gi, with no mixing item. If you do this, I mean, there's no point in doing this because it's just for the novelty. Like, it's not going to help you. It could maybe make things more challenging, so you maybe play better. Maybe, I don't know. But if you do this, it won't take you many attempts, but keep in mind that there are other 
QQ bangs, like one star QQ bangs you can get from this if you decide to use this. Just keep trying it. The outfit is very, very, very cheap to buy in the clothing store. If you do it, fair play. There's no real reason to apart from novelty. And uh, yeah, that's how you make a neutral QQ bang. Speaking of QQ bangs, however, the absolute best QQ bang recipe as of right now in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is mixing the Bardock top, the Dragon Ball Z Bardock top, with the Beerus top and using a Super Mix Capsule Z as the mixing items. I believe this will get you access to any QQ bang, even a bad one. But if you're going to use this, this is more likely going to give you an excellent six star QQ bang. That is, well, there's no way to really say it. If you can get a good one, it's very overpowered and fantastic. The very, very first Canton, it's still funny, the very first Canton City TV broadcast in Xenoverse 2 didn't actually work after literal months of promotion and the Supreme Kai of Time with Trunks and Elder Kai reminding you about it every time you were to load into Canton City. After my, it's, honestly, it's still so funny that they couldn't get it to work. The first Canton City TV broadcast didn't work. This was the broadcast that sh revealed the winners of the Japanese Super Fashion Contest, I believe. I don't know because I couldn't see it because it didn't work. It didn't work for anybody. It was the same one that revealed or hinted at four pair of Jiren being added in at the time. The next update, which would have been Legendary Pack 2 for Dragon Ball Universe 2. And it didn't work for a single person. The countdown happened and then nothing. <laughs> it's still funny. Although there is not an Ultra Instinct Awoken skill in Universe 2, at least as of the recording of this video, there is a slight workaround and that is a super attack. Unsu well, not unsurprisingly, surprisingly belonging to Android 13. This skill is called Data Input, and if you use it, it will give you the same sort of effect as what Ultra Instinct Goku has, the Auto Dodge. Keep in mind, however, that basic key blasts will stop the Auto Dodge. But if you want to make an Ultra Instinct character, I guess, Data Input and then using Glovy Cyclone after it to prolong the effect of Data Input is a fairly decent workaround in all fairness. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is not crossplay. Legendary Pack 1 for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 added the Canton City Vault. However, it's taken about 14 months for the winners to actually be revealed, even though the vaulting closed within the first few weeks of Legendary Pack 1 being out and then additional vaults or categories being added for the Legendary Pack 2 update. It took over a year and then some to get both the super mix capsule and super mix capsule z mixing items you need to do pillow quests but you need to do them by talking to the multiplayer modes ai computer wh yeah whatever you want to call him in canton city right by the giant arch if you go and do a normal parallel quest from the parallel quest robots these will not even be something that you can get don't know if this is a glitch or bug or what have you, but you have to do a parallel quest tour to get both Eva and or the Super Mix Capsule or better yet, the Super Mix Capsule Z. Again, you cannot get these just from doing a normal parallel quest. You have to talk to the multiplayer modes. Canton City Resident. If you have Super Mix Capsules and spare Demon Realm Crystals, you can mix them both together to get one Super Mix Capsule Z. Once you've defeated Raditz and can pick which character you want to appear as the Toki Toki hero, including your Xenoverse 1 characters, if you performed a data transfer at the very start of your Xenoverse 2 save file, some of these characters are actually the winners from, I believe, the last Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 world tournament the reward i believe they i forget when they said it but the reward was basically they will be added to a custom loading screen on ps4 i don't know about other consoles which look, does look quite nice actually and also to be part of the data transfer feature from xenoverse 1 to xenoverse 2 which in turn 
has immortalized them. Fair play. The official name for the Xenoverse 2 default hero is me, spelt M-E-E. -E. And the official name of the default Xenoverse 1 hero, the future warrior summoned by Shenron, his name, the official name, is Ace. With the exception of the Turn Golden Awoken skill, there are no other exclusive skills available for the Freezer race. For whatever reason, Shining Slash and Burning Slash are only available to Saiyans and Earthlings. Don't know why there's no sort of restrictions because it's just an animation that makes sense. Although there are other hybrid Saiyan skills that are available to anyone. For example, Burst Rush, for example, Besenko, for example, Heat Dome Attack. Back in Xenoverse 1, you couldn't see your opponent's key or stamina like how you could see it or how you can see it in Xenoverse 2. And side note, a bit of history here, I distinctly remember when this was in like the trailers and the promotion, you know, <laughs> leading up to Xenoverse 2 being released, the quote-unquote competitive Xenoverse 1 players Whatever that means, I don't know. I remember a lot of them at the time really complaining about this. <laughs> it's just so weird. The Hakai Ultimate Attack, also officially known as in Xenoverse 2, the Destructive Fission Ultimate Attack, was severely nerfed in the Legendary Pack 2 update, the free update rather, that balanced out skills, the patch updates and stuff like that. It got nerfed to the point where, as of right now at least, the way that Hakai works is if you take any damage at all, either it be from like a basic key blast or even a stone thrown by Jackal or have you. If you've launched the Hakai and receive any damage, regardless of how small it may be, it will disintegrate the Hakai. Whereas before the way it worked is that it would only disintegrate if you had your stamina broken or rather if you waited long enough and the Hakai didn't hit your opponent or if you didn't activate it. Thanks, Bandai. <laughs> if you have access to both the old Canton City server and the new Canton City server, as in you are playing on the PS4, PS5 version of Dragon Ball Universe 2, you can get two login bonuses per day, meaning technically speaking, if you're lucky and you time it right, technically you could get just from logging into Universe 2, the you know, both the servers, you could technically get two Dragon Balls per day, depending on when the rewards are, as well as a lot of Zenny, Hercule badges, which can be sold for, well, a lot of Zenny, as well as, I think, 60 TP medals. Again, that's just from logging into both the old and the new Canton City servers. The Canton City TV is only available in the multi-lobbies. It is not available in the single lobbies. I have lost count how many comments I've had since this was added and introduced and people saying that they can't see it or where is it? I mean, it, if you're in the mortal lobby, it's you, you literally can't miss it. Just look up. It's only available in the multi lobbies, not in the single lobbies. You can actually throw Dragon Balls. If you go to a pedal quest where you have to go and collect the Dragon Balls and send them back to the time machine to complete that pedal quest, if you have either one Dragon Ball or if you're holding two Dragon Balls and then go for the grab input, you will throw them. There's a different animation depending on if you have one Dragon Ball or two Dragon Balls and you can technically throw them at your opponents. Back in Xenoverse 1, you could actually destroy parts of the mountain stage. But for whatever reason, in Xenoverse 2, they made it so you couldn't do it, even if you go to the exact same position on the exact same parallel quest. Why this was removed is beyond me because it was such a cool feature and you need to do it in Xenoverse 1 to get one of the Dragon Balls for one of the Dragon Ball parallel quests. Apart from being able to throw the Dragon Balls if you have them, you can also limit burst if you're holding them, either if you're holding one of them or if you're holding two. You can use the R3 input and I'd assume it'll just be whatever the right analog stick is on other consoles, but on PS4, PS5, and PC, I believe, if you click R3, 
on your controller, you can actually use the Dragon Radar to get a better perspective of where the Dragon Balls are. If you throw the Dragon Balls so they are close to each other, and I believe you have to make them so them very close to each other, they will slightly glow like how they do when they are close to each other in the series. Going back to Xenoverse 1, once again, if you used any of the Super Saiyan forms and bonus fact, I guess, they weren't awoken in Xenoverse 1, they were ultimate, so a Super Saiyan ultimate attack, which is weird saying that, but regardless, if you used any of the Super Saiyan forms in Xenoverse 1, you would have unlimited key, and when you went for supers and ultimates, it wouldn't drain your key. Well, rather, when you're in these forms, your key will constantly drain, unless you were to use a charge skill or a specific super soul, etc. But you wouldn't lose key specifically for going for a super or an ultimate attack. Now, although wearing sunglasses on an outfit, an accessory, or what have you, won't protect you from skills such as solar flare, if you use this super soul here, you will be able to protect yourself and your allies from blinding skills such as the solar flare. Even if you're not wearing sunglasses, because sure, why not? So if you summon one of the Zeno CC mascots and then use the Kamehameha pose, it will mimic you. And I never knew this, so fair play. <laughs> Android 21 has what is probably the most unique charged key blast in all of Dragon Ball Universe 2, which is this one right here. And the reason I say this is because at least as of the upload or rather the recording of this part right here and this video in general, there is no way to have this on your custom character. Like like how you can change it to like a paralyzed key blast, a charge key, or a barrage key blast, rush key blast, you know, what you want to call it, a heavy. There's no super lot to do with that, and there's no way, again, as of right now, to change it to this, and there's no other character and no other preset, again, as of right now, that will have this on their character. If you wear the rosy outfit on your freeze race character and then use the turn golden awoken skill, it will glitch out and make the rosy outfit completely black. Much like with Super Saiyan Kefla, first form cell also has two different grabs. One of them is if you're in the air, and the other one is if you're on the ground. The DLC vehicle, the Space Pod vehicle, is the only vehicle in Xenoverse 2 right now that if you fall off of the city and once you're teleported back, it will have a different sound effect. Take a listen. There is a character in Canton City with this name right here. I don't know how you pronounce it, Zazomu? I don't, whatever. But you may have noticed that this character has a name that is very, very similar to an official Dragon Ball character, that being Zamasu. And I believe this character is part of the Hero Coliseum. I'm only mentioning that because Zamasu was revealed in Dragon Ball Super in 2016, but the Hero Coliseum wasn't added until late 2017. So they knew of Zamasu, so why they left this in? I mean, it's a different character, but it's so, so eerily close to Zamasu. It's literally one letter off. There is a somewhat, but not really, secret preset of Beerus, kind of, but again, not really, and that's preset two, which at first glance, you may not notice there's anything different, but if you look at Beerus's head, he's actually got the Wiz symbol on his head. Play the Xenoverse 2 story mode, and you'll understand why. But this is something that I didn't realize until much, 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 much later on in Xenoverse 2's life cycle. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 is not cancelled. Ah, this is a weird one. So as of the upload, well, presumably as of the upload of this video, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 has not been announced or leaked or anything like that. Every once in a while, like every couple of weeks, I'll either get a comment on my channel or a tweet on the at is Universe 3 confirmed yet Twitter account, which I do run, link in the description to my link tree, blah, 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 go give it a follow. I'll get a comment or a tweet of someone saying, I'll oh, just stop it. Bandai have said that they are not doing Xenoverse 3 or something very similar to that. Like, oh, they said that it's cancelled. No, this is not true in 
any way, shape or form. For it to be cancelled, they would have had to have announced it first. And again, as of right now, they have not done that. I don't know for sure where this rumour started, but I think it started from an interview that the Dragon Ball Fighters producer gave saying something about something about the future of Xenoverse or something like that and it was mistranslated but that's all people need for people to run with it so again as of right now Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 is not cancelled it's not announced or anything like that but with that said it might maybe and this isn't a hint at anything but it might maybe who knows be worth just keeping a bit of an eye out but if you get over 99 hits in a single combo instead of saying 100 and then 101 and then going forward from there it will just say a Z combo. In the early days of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, if you used the Super Key Explosion Ultimate Attack specifically on the Hyperbolic Time Chamber stage inside the Time Chamber, it used to hard crash the game. I don't know if this happened on Xbox or PC, it happened on a PS4 version. I may have covered it in a video from back then, but this was patched out a very, very, very long time ago. I think it was even patched out before they even announced Xenoverse 2 being released on the Switch version. But yeah, it just used to crash the game, which, I mean, it's not that interesting. Well, I think it's interesting because it's a piece of Xenoverse 2 history. I mean, you can see in this clip here, I tried to do it for the purposes of this video, but no, it was patched out a very long time ago. If you've already got Final Form Mirror, Demon God Demigra, and Final Form Grotesque Merge, Zomasu, whatever you want to call him, unlocked via the gifts, if you then get those gifts again and then talk to Fu in Canton City and then hand over one of those gifts, because you've already got those characters unlocked, instead, he will give you 10 demon realm crystals which as we've already mentioned for qq bangs are exceptionally useful again that's only if you've already given him either of those three gifts or just one of them which is why you may see in some videos i have 10 of the i think it's the mirror gift just in case in the future if i need demon crystals quickly. The time nest in Xenoverse 2 uses different shaders compared to the rest of Canton City. Although this isn't confirmed, the reason for this is more than likely, well probably because the time nest could have been copy and pasted from Xenoverse 1 directly into Xenoverse 2 and at least as of right now they've not updated the shader from the time nest compared to the rest of Canton city you can kind of but not really have two different colors for your hair in xenoverse 2 if you have black hair and then wear the baby trunks hat accessory it's technically two different hair colors oh. <laughs> if you're lucky you can pick up a turtle hermit shell accessory by picking up one of the items at the resort area in Canton City. Artwork number one is a reference to the iconic Goku versus Freezer pose in Dragon Ball Z on the Xenoverse 2, played out by Supreme Kai of Time and Zeno Trunks. There's a few secret trophies and I guess on the Xbox and Steam achievements you can get in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. The reason why these are kind of secret is because they don't automatically pop up once you've met the requirements. One of these is for getting to level 99, as of right now, the max level in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Once you've reached level 99, talk to this character here in Canton City, Oshi, who is by, well, fairly close to the Dragon Ball pedestal, and then once you once you are level 99, talk to him and you'll then get a trophy or an achievement for reaching level 99. Same thing, I think if you get 70 or more fig different unique figurines from the Hero Coliseum, do that, talk to Ashi, and you will then get a trophy and or, or rather, or an achievement. 
Vegito is playable in both Dragon Ball Xenoverse games, Xenoverse 1 and Xenoverse 2, but he does not appear in the main story modes. Yes, in Xenoverse 2, he appears as Super Saiyan Blue Vegito in a DLC story mode mission and also in the Tolkopedia, but in terms of the main, I guess, like base game, he does not appear as any character, well, he doesn't appear in the story mode for either games, despite being a playable character. Custom Future Trunks is actually a custom Xeno Trunks, not necessarily Future Trunks because of, well, the lung cult that he has. This is the Xeno version, not the Future version, even though it's kind of, but not really the same character. In Super Dragon Ball Heroes, it's so weird, but yeah, in Xenoverse 2, Custom Future Trunks is technically Xeno Trunks. There's a very subtle reference to the Dragon Ball Raging Blast series in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, and I think also technically in Xenoverse 1 as well. You can get, well, you can hear this from completing the final Goku Mentor mission. It's the mission where if you complete it, you unlock the Super Kamehameha Ultimate Attack. Take a listen. That's enough. I don't think I have anything else I can teach you. Nuts! You really are incredible! It was a raging blast fighting with you! Before it was revealed to be called Xenoverse, what we now know as Dragon Ball Xenoverse was first known as Dragon Ball Z Project 2014. And a few bonus facts for you here relating to this. It wasn't revealed to be Xenoverse until that year's E3. So E3 2014, when they revealed the official trailer and called it Dragon Ball Xenoverse. And also, once again, a bit of a bonus fact for you here. Because of, again, mistranslations, rumors, mishearing things and stuff like that, before it was called Xenoverse, for like maybe an hour, maybe a couple of hours, or maybe just for like under an hour, around like that sort of time frame, I guess, before the trailer was officially, officially revealed, we thought, oh, it's either going to be called Xenoverse, or again, because of mistranslations and mishearing things and stuff like that, it was either going to be called Xenoverse or Xenobirth. Not Zeno, as in Z Grand Zeno, because he wasn't even introduced yet. Just like Zeno Birth, Zeno Verse. Do you get it? The water, quote unquote, food that you can buy from the item shop in Xenoverse 2 is by far the best, again, quote unquote, food you can buy to feed Margin Boo to then make him, you know, make the other margins appear so you can get the items from them and if you're on a margin character to unlock the purification mission the reason this is the best is because i believe you unlock this very very early on if not at the very start or rather after defeating raditz or getting access to the five time rifts and also because of how cheap it is the only sort of i guess issue but it's not an issue is that I think it takes 30 or 33 to fill up the, his uh, food bar once. So you might have to, well, you will be making just a couple of the trips from the item shop to the Margin Boo House Time Rift in order to max it out. But this is by far the easiest method. And with exception maybe of Kyle Ken, because of this method, purification is the second easiest and quickest awoken skill to actually unlock in xenoverse 2. the further you progress through the hero coliseum the more vibrant Canton city will become the further you get in terms of completing the story mode mission in the hero coliseum as well as the free mode missions more characters related to the hero coliseum will appear all over Canton city for you to challenge to a hero coliseum match and stuff like that meaning that if you're willing to put the time in to you know to complete all of the hero coliseum you're gonna be rewarded by canton city just feeling a bit more alive base form vegeta is significantly more stronger than super villainous mold janemba let me explain as you can see right here Vegeta in his base form defeats a powered up Janemba, again, Vegeta's in his base form, just by using a final flash. This doesn't matter, and I'm only mentioning this because this is somewhat of an inside joke or a running joke on my channel when I do my Xenoverse 2 challenge videos. It doesn't matter, it's not serious, it's dumb, I love it. 
But given that it took Goku and Vegeta to not only fuse to make Gogeta, but for it to be a Super Saiyan Gogeta to defeat a weaker version of Janemba, given that Vegeta in a weaker form can one-shot a stronger version of that character, makes no sense. I mean, could you at least have made him Super Saiyan 1 or Super Saiyan 2, maybe? <laughs> if you have a bald, sane, custom character, Avatar, Kak, whatever you want to call it, and then use Super Saiyan 3, you will get a full head of hair. Because, yeah. <laughs> but there's a true secret ending to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, and the way you get it is by failing... Yes, you heard me right. It's by failing this mission right here at a certain part in the mission. This is a this is an extra mission from the Legendary Pack 2 DLC. And if you fail this mission at a certain point, then well, this cutscene will play. Kakarot. Bardock! It's time to change the future together! Ah! Yeah, but did you predict this? Coordinate set. What? Reza! Ah! Is that all? Nope. Just a little for good measure. Ah! You're going down, Frieza. Wait! I'll make you the highest ranking commander of the Frieza Falls! We'll rule together! This will change everything. You're dead! Do it succeed against Inferior! Ah, uh, okay, maybe we aim too high. Vegito has three presets, with preset two representing Goku with skills such as the Kamehameha and Super Dragon Fist, and preset three representing Vegeta with skills such as Final Flash, and naturally preset one is the true Vegito preset. If you limit burst while having any sort of power up activated, such as Divinity Unleashed, such as any of the fighting poses, etc., once the limit burst has run out, it will remove all prior power ups. So just be careful. You can use the Tri Beam Super Attack even if you're holding one of the Dragon Balls from the few Dragon Ball Collection missions, and naturally, as well, you can also fully charge it like how you would be able to just using the tri-beam super attack normally even though vegeto is the strongest character in all of dragon ball z before dragon ball made a return with the dragon ball z battle of the gods movie so in essence even though vegeto is the strongest character in all of dragon ball z before the beera stuff happened in Xenoverse 2, and I also believe in Xenoverse 1, he only has full power charge. He's the strongest character. Why does he have the second worst charge game in all of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2? Why? There is a voice actor in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, and his name is Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> No, not that one. On the 10th of July 2022, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 was, in quotations, leaked. Now, I have said in the past that I've known about Xenoverse 3 since, I forget the exact date, but it was in December of 2021. Side note, I don't know if that's when it started production. It may have started soon well later than that or after i just don't know 
But again, on the 10th of July, 2022, sources that have posted stuff about Dragon Ball both games and the movies in the past also posted about Xenoverse 3. For example, these are people who leaked stuff about, like very specific stuff about Dragon Ball Super, Superhero, such as Gohan's Beast Mode and what it looked like, Cell Max before we got a look what he looked like, Piccolo going back to his giant form for the Cell Max battle, and people who have leaked stuff about video games in the past. For example, the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Bardock DLC, what, what, four, five, five or six or even seven months before it was officially revealed. These are people who have known and who, well, leaked Xenoverse 3 is happening. The speculation is 2024 because of an offhanded comment, but there is a good chance it could be either in 2023, late 2023, or later on, we don't know. Do subscribe to the channel because that will be covered once more information is available. The way you unlock Super Saiyan 4 Goku in the original Xenoverse game, so in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1, is a bit strange and awkward and just just weird in general compared to how you unlock literally any other character. To unlock Super Saiyan 4 Goku in Xenoverse 1, you have to clear all of the parallel quests excluding the DLC parallel quests and then you get Super Saiyan 4 Goku as a playable character i have no idea why they did this it, like why not make it super saiyan 4 gogeta instead sure why not even if both you and your opponent have not limit burst if you use body change you then won't be able to limit burst anyway it will be as if you've already used it even if you didn't use it before the body change hits let's talk about the partner customization keys and how to actually get them so to get a partner customization key you need to just clear any raid not a crystal raid it has to be a raid against the raid boss it can be either a normal raid a light raid and or an extra raid now it doesn't matter how you clear it you can literally stand still and i know you can stand still because that's how i got the super baby vegeta key and the super saiyan 4 gold Gita key just stand still if you want it doesn't change anything but once you clear the raid either by surviving for five minutes or and or rather by defeating the raid boss you then have a 30 percent chance to get a partner customization key now listen carefully to what i just said it's a 30 percent chance to get a key doesn't necessarily mean a 30 percent chance to get a key that you don't already have at least that's the case for the extra raid which you know like the extra raids which are added in the canton city vault uh, dlc 14 update we think those may be glitched because everyone's been getting better drop rates and keys and stuff like that from a normal raid or a light raid not from an extra raid an extra raid as of right now is a raid online where it's only you and four others rather than a group of six in total so again it's a 30 percent chance of a key to drop but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a new one so if that if this is how it's going to stay in the future the more keys they add the harder it's going to get unless they fix something. And again, side note, if you get the last hit on the, on the boss or anything, that does not in any way, shape or form increase the chance of you getting a key. That's a misnomer. It might be a placebo. I don't know. But the way it works is just win. That's literally all you have to do. Doesn't matter how you win. You can literally stand still. And again, that's how I got my custom Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta key, as well as the custom Super Baby Vegeta 2 key. The Canton City TV can show artwork that you don't even have unlocked and even artwork that have yet to become available, such as artwork 157, 156 and artwork 200. Two. Custom Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta can use time skip. No, really, he has a time skip skill, the Flash Fist Crush, I believe the name of it is. This is more than likely a reference to Dragon Ball GT when Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta battled against Omega Shenron and 
Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta was able to like land punches on him without even moving, or at least to us, right? It could be a reference to that. Either way, very cool detail, and it just feels great using a time skip skill on Super Saiyan 4 a Gogeta. The level cap in Xenoverse 2 and technically in Xenoverse 1 was never always level 99. In Xenoverse 2, when the game first came out, the level cap was level 80, and then when the first DLC came out, the DB Super Pack 1 DLC, the level cap was raised from level 80 to 85, then when the second DLC came out, it was then raised again from level 85 to level 90, DLC 3 from level 90 to 95, and then for the DB Super Pack 4, the DLC that added Vegeta Blue and fused Zarmasu as playable characters, they then finally raised the level cap for the last time as of this recording and upload from level 95 to level 99. Will they increase it further to level 100 in the future? More than likely, no, just in general. Certainly not in Xenoverse 2, but I guess we'll have to wait and see for Xenoverse 3. That rhymed, please leave a like on the video. <laughs> Dispo, especially in his Awoken skill, is currently the fastest character in all of Dragon Ball Xenoverse, including Xenoverse 1 and Xenoverse 2. I mean, just look at him right here. He is absolutely insanely fast. Oh, yes. This next one may seem very common sense or very uh as a piece of trivia or a fact or have you but if you click r3 on the character selection screen right here you can actually zoom in on the character again the, the literal only reason i've included this is because i have had one comment a while ago asking how to do it uh, and yeah so there you go R3 is the button on PS4, PS5. <laughs> once you've cleared the very first mission by defeating Raditz, once you're then introduced to vehicles, there's actually a bit of an error here because it says that you can use a vehicle in the time nest. But again, at least as of right now, you can't use any vehicle of any kind or use your CC mascot in the time nest. So it was either that it was originally planned so you could use your vehicle in the time nest, which I really hope it was or that it gets changed because it's a bit of a trek in there. <laughs> or it's the meant to say, well, I don't know. It's not even the could say the time vault. So it's either a mistake, a typo, or it was scrapped. Gigantic Raw is the worst skill to use in raids. The reason being is because, yes, although it may do a decent amount of damage, and although it only hits the opponent once, it then gives the opponent, the raid boss, a few seconds of invincibility, meaning they do not receive any more damage for, again, just a couple of seconds, which makes it very unfair and very annoying for the other teammates. Do not use this. It's also just as bad as Divine Lasso because Divine Lasso traps them in like a bit of an, uh, well, it's like a cutscene animation, what have you. Do not use either of these skills. As a side note, when I host lobbies for raids online, just randomly and people join, if anyone uses these and then they join back, I do tend to kick them because, again, you're making it so other teammates, your other teammates can't do as much damage as they would normally be able to do. The full version of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 went free to play or free to download on the 20th of September 2022 on PlayStation if you are a part of either PlayStation Plus Extra or PlayStation Plus Premium. The full game is free if you're a member of either of those. Do keep in mind, though, that this doesn't include the DLC. There is a, um, <laughs> a unintentionally funny voiceover line in Xenoverse 1 and technically in the Legend Patrol for Xenoverse 2 involving Eric Vale, which I don't think this should have been included or it wasn't meant to be included. <laughs> Take a listen. We don't have much time left. Could you stop those two? Mm. Guys... Certain partner customization key characters do not have a an active aura, which is a bit weird because you're just so used to it. These characters include custom Super Saiyan God Goku, custom Super Saiyan God Vegeta, and custom Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. For whatever reason, custom Omega Shenron does not have any skills from Nova Shenron, only from 
Ice Shenron. Nail is a playable character. No, really, that's it. Uh, yeah, Nail is, without any shadow of a doubt, the most forgettable character so far in all of Xenoverse. He wasn't in Xenoverse 1, so he was actually one of the new characters added from Xenoverse 1 into Xenoverse 2. As of right now, he doesn't have a second preset, he doesn't even have a raid preset, I don't believe, and he doesn't have a custom key preset. Again, this video is intended to be uploaded before DLC 15, the Hero of Justice Pack 1 DLC comes out. Things may change by the time that comes out, but he is the most forgettable character and I don't think anyone would really care if he wasn't added at all. Yeah, uh, moving on. <laughs> Goku, with the exception of his Ultra Instinct forms, is somewhat designed to be a character that's easy to use but hard to master and a character that you can just play Xenoverse 2 now without playing it before and do decently well with. Let's be honest, Dragon Ball is the Goku show, right? Like, it just is. So, given that he's designed to be easy to use but hard to master, does make sense. For example, his square combo can easily be extended into a infinite combo and his heavy is a fantastic knockdown and on his super saiyan blue presets he has seven bars of key meaning you can go for both ultimates back to back after a triangle well a heavy knockdown and stamina break etc raw oh and let's not forget about super saiyan blue kyle ken he hits is technically the best character in all of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. There's a few reasons for this, but the main reason is just how fast and efficient he is at key cancelling. The Kaioken Awoken skills are known for draining your stamina, but if you have the Super Saiyan Blue Goku Super Soul equipped and you just go into the normal Kaioken, so I guess Kaioken times one, you will actually slightly regenerate stamina rather than losing it. The TP Metal Store used to only be open on the weekends. Yes, really. I believe it was from... I believe it used to be open from every Friday to Monday, and then it was shut for the rest of the week. I promise I am being serious here. This isn't a meme or a joke. It's something that I actually forgot about. Now, I believe it was either in... It was one of the very early DLCs, DLC 1 or 2, I believe. They then changed it so it's now open 24-7 with certain items constantly rotating throughout the TP Metal Store. You could also use to change your console's time to the weekends to trick it to opening. So it never really was truly shut. But yeah, I, I honestly can't believe... I, why? Why would I think that was a good idea in the first place? Base form Teen Gohan is actually in both Xenoverse 1 and Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 in the story mode as part of a cutscene when you defeat Cell at the end of the Cell Saga. Although, as of right now, even though the model is there, he is not a playable character. And speaking of unplayable characters, Super Saiyan Rage Trunks is in the game as a character that actually moves around. <laughs> this is in the Zamasu or the Goku Black Story Mode DLC, which I believe was DLC number four, the DB Super Pack 4. And as you can see here, Super Saiyan Rage Future Trunks is a character, but for whatever reason, in Dimps' Infinite Wisdom, I guess, or rather Bandai, I guess, they just make, they just didn't make him a playable character. Will this change in the future? Again, probably not, but we will have to just wait and see. The first ever online raid event in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was in the, I believe, the first closed beta for Xenoverse 2 against Margin Vegeta before they changed his name in Xenoverse 2 from Margin Vegeta to Prince of Destruction Vegeta. In terms of just damage, Final Explosion will deal out the most damage out of any ultimate attack against a raid boss and give you more points. Now, certain raid bosses, will you, you just won't be able to use Final Explosion against them, right? So, with that said, a second ultimate that you should be using in raids is Emperor's Death Beam. You cannot at all go wrong with the Emperor's Death Beam 
ultimate attack. Annoyingly enough, you can't skip the credits. Now, you can skip the credits if you go back and rewatch or replay the mission where you defeat Final Form Mirror with the help of Super Saiyan Blue Goku via the Time Vault, but every time that you go through the story mode for the first time with any character, even if you've already completed it repeatedly on other characters, you can't skip the credits, which, yes, I know we should look at the people who worked on the game and all that good stuff, like we actually should, but it's a bit annoying. <laughs> and Mirror is actually in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Now, for the purposes of this video, I can't show the cutscene or what happens because you can't replay the story mode of Mirror in Kakarot. Maybe that will change in the future, but as of this upload, you can't replay you can fight him again but not the cutscene and the story mode aspects of it but basically you fight mirror at the end of dragon ball z kakra as like a secret hidden boss to some extent and it kind of explains what happens to some extent between the events of well after xenoverse 1 and before the events of dragon ball xenoverse 2 so to some extent you can say that that's dragon ball xenoverse 1.5 maybe sure hey did you leave a like on the video yes mostly because of youtubers hi that includes me um <laughs> we tend to call each Xenoverse 2 DLC one number after what it actually is. So for example, the Hero of Justice Pack 1 DLC is technically and officially the 14th paid DLC for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, but as YouTubers, we refer to it as DLC 15. The reason for this is because in 2020, when the free Supreme Kite of Time update came out, we just refer to that during the promotion and for like YouTube titles and thumbnails and stuff like that. We referred to that DLC as DLC 11 because it was the 11th major update. So if you use, if there's any sort of like con uh, confusion of like, oh, why are they calling this DLC 15, DLC 16, etc, 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 raw. That's the reason for it. And I think we're kind of too far in at this point now to start calling it, for example, DLC 14, because we did that for the Canton City Vault DLC. And then DLC 15 or 13 was Legendary Pack 2, even though it was the 12th paid DLC. As of right now, Semi Perfect Cell is the only character excluding giant characters and DLC characters or DLC based characters such as Super Saiyan Rage Future Trunks that is not a playable character despite actually being fully in the game from the Dragon Ball Universe 2 Dragon Ball the Breakers crossover event because sure why not what a missed opportunity <laughs> supreme kai of time has a unique animation when she uses the maximum charge super attack i don't believe there's anything different from this version of maximum charge but it's the well supreme kai of time as of right now is the only character in xenoverse 2 with a different animation for just the normal maximum charge the perfect kamehameha ultimate attack cannot be blocked or perfect blocked even if you have a perfect block or rather just guard limit burst so just be careful you can however perfect block just normal basic key blasts although the timing is exceptionally tricky if you can do it fair play you can actually start xenoverse 2 through dragon ball the breakers and vice versa which is a bit weird and i also believe you can purchase either game through the other game if you don't have either of them which is a bit weird in a weird way weird because that and only about what just over a month before breakers came out which had this option available they made it so, once again, Xenoverse 2 is free on PlayStation in certain PlayStation Plus categories or tiers if you have either PlayStation Plus Extra or PlayStation Plus Premium. It's almost as if them trying to give Xenoverse 2 one final push to get a bigger install base for maybe something that could happen in the near future. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 has one of the most active thriving and just phenomenal pc modding communities in all of gaming it is absolutely fantastic and once universe 2 does finish getting 
DLC and updates and stuff like that. I have a feeling that at least on the PC modding side, it's not going to go away any time soon. Although, as of right now, it's not used in the game, Goku Black does actually have a voice file of him saying, and presumably using, Kyle Ken. Same thing for Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, and characters such as Brody as well also have voice lines of them using or saying Final Flash, and as well as Raccoon, using dancing para para or rather a dancing para para inspired voice line so this next one may seem a bit pointless but it's something i didn't know until i was making a new character and progressing through the xenoverse 2 story mode but boost dashing is the official name for flying in the city now yes i do know that you can boost dash in battles but I don't know, I just never knew that, yeah, it's it's flight, It's this is a bit of a weird one, it's just something that you can read on the screen right now, oh man. <laughs> Match coordinators are a thing in Canton City. These were added in a very early update, I forget which one it was, it may have been the first DLC, I think. The intended purpose of these is for you to stand by, I think there's three of them, to stand by them in Canton City and to use the Seeking Opponents emote and then have people come up to you and challenge you. I have literally never, ever, ever, and I mean this, I've never, ever seen anyone stand by these using that emote, even, I believe at least, even when... It first came out. I think if you talk to these for the first time, you will get the Seeking Opponents emote. But apart from that, these serve zero purpose. Why were these added? <laughs> QQ Bangs did not exist in the original Dragon Ball Xenoverse game. They were only introduced in Xenoverse 2 as a way for you to be able to properly customize the appearance of your character. So back in Xenoverse 1, the only way you could increase or decrease to some extent your stats or boost certain stats, for example, if you were a key or a strike based player, would be the equipment you wore and the and boosting your attribute points. So you saw back in Prime Xenoverse 1, you saw a lot of people wearing very, very, very similar outfits because, well, that's how you did it back in the original Xenoverse game. For probably obvious reasons, body change can't be used in certain modes, such as the story mode, raids, expert missions, and parallel quests. The Icarus CC mascot will copy you if you use the Elder Kai emote as you can see right here. In the first Dragon Ball The Breakers special mission in Xenoverse 2, there's actually a civilian that looks like an older version of the one, the only, the legendary Bert. The most expensive clothing in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is Beerus's clothes at 80,000 zenny. The cheapest outfit in Xenoverse 2 right now is a tie between the Saiyan and Earthling uniform, the Namekian battle suit, the Freezer race bile suit, and the Margin Boo Gi, do you get it, all at 400 zenny each. Using Hellstein Shock on Captain Ginyu will actually damage his battle armor as you can see right here and unfortunately this does not work if you use it on your custom character. You can't access Freezer's spaceship, the Freezer Time Rift, if the Freezer invasion event of Canton City is on. Now for the purposes of this video, the event as of right now is not on so I can't show that. But there is a very simple workaround this if you need to access the Freezer Spaceship Time Rift. And that is just, well, just disconnect from the internet on your console. It will still be on, however, if you stay connected and even if you go into the single lobby. So just if you need to go into the Freezer Spaceship and you can't wait for the event to finish, just disconnect from the internet on your console, then load up Xenoverse 2 and the event will not be on. There's actually a decent chance that the Breaker Energy Wave Ultimate Attack, also known as the Angry Kamehameha, was originally planned to be in the game but for whatever reason was cut or 
taken out of the base game to be resold later on. And the reason for this, well, there's a few reasons. Firstly, it's the first new skill available from the first DLC that Xenoverse got. So it was from Parallel Quest 101. And if you go into the skill list, it's actually near the top. Now, every DLC skill, with the exception of the Breaker Energy Wave, and I think the Jumping Energy Wave, but you can get that from the TP Mail Store technically for free or without having to buy additional content, every DLC skill is at the bottom of the list apart from again the breaker energy wave even though that is also a dlc skill meaning that yeah there's actually a very good chance that they deliberately and intentionally removed this from the base game to put into a paid dlc later on if that is the case then well make of that what you will use code kick on gfu use code kick on gfu Use code KICK ON G FUEL to save 1G PERSON OFF